Now so far we've just been looking at the CS6 layout, um, but occasionally you're going to open projects that were done in a previous version of Premiere Pro and you're going to find that the layout changes. So for example if I open, open a project and I open up a CS5 project, so see how this start CS5, open that one up, save change to the present project, now I don't need to do that, and it's saying you need to save it as a new version because we've changed from CS5 to CS6, so therefore we need to give it a new name. I've actually already created one that's called CS6, so I'm going to allow this one to call it CS5-1, but generally speaking I would just call it CS6 at this point. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see that I'm in CS6, I can see that from the little icon at the top here, but uh, that's the CS5 workspace, and I want to work in the CS6 workspace. So, if you want to move between the two workspaces, you simply go to Windows, Workspace, and then you'll notice you've got an editing workspace and a CS 5.5 editing workspace. However, at the moment, I can see the CS 5.5 workspace. What's going on? Well, actually, if you want it to look like CS 6, you need to reset this workspace. So you go Windows, Workspace, and then towards the bottom, you'll see that you've got Reset Current Workspace. And when you click Reset Current Workspace, it says, are you sure you want to reset it to its original layout? Now, its original layout, I hasten to say, is not the 5.5 layout or the CS5 layout. It is the new CS6 layout. So when I click yes, I want to take it to its original layout. I'm not saying the original layout where the project was created, but the original layout for CS6. So click OK or yes, and you'll see that there is my project laid out with the CS6 layout. Now, say you still like the CS5.5 layout, I hope you notice that under Windows Workspaces, you still have the option for editing in a CS5.5 layout fashion. So you just click on that one, and it will take you back to the CS5.5 or CS5 version of the layout of the window. You still don't have Jog and Shuttle, you still need to learn to use those JKL and Shift JKL to be able to go backwards and forwards in your panels but you've got the layout as it previously looked in CS 5.5 with the additions of the better audio meter and what have you. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Windows Workspace Editing and it'll take me back to the CS 6 layout, but do bear in mind that the layout is still completely customizable. So I can, if I wanted, move my windows around backwards and forwards. I can make things a lot bigger and a lot smaller. I can bring other panels to the fore, I can even change where panels are. So say I wanted the info panel to be logged up here with the source panel. I don't know why I'd want to, but I might want to. So if you see these hash areas here, next to the word info, you've got these dots. If you click and hold on those dots and start to drag the thing around, you'll see that we get these different areas which are called drop zones. If I drop it in the middle like this, it will create the info panel tabbed with all the other ones in this particular frame. So if I let go, you'll see that there's info tabbed with all the other panels inside the frame. So if I go back to info, I can't see it, but notice I've got this tiny little scroll bar at the top which I can click and drag to actually get to info. So I can take info, and if I pull it to the side, so I get a side drop zone like this, I'm actually going to create a brand new frame in between the two frames that are already there. So if I let go, you'll see that I've got my original source panel and all the other bits and pieces with a much smaller scroll bar here. And I've got a brand new frame all on its own, which happens to be the info panel, and I can resize these however I like. So say I want the info panel all on its own, but I still want to be able to have my source clips here and my main program monitor here and move it around and say I really like that layout, that's gonna suit me for what I need to do next. I can save that workspace. How do we save workspaces? You go to Windows, Workspace, and then you'll say New Workspace, just here. And when you click New Workspace, you can give it a name. So I can call this Info to 
front and click OK. And now I've got a workspace which is info to front. However, if I were to go to Windows Workspace and go back to my editing workspace, you'll see that actually it looks exactly the same. The reason is because I created this new workspace in my editing workspace. My editing workspace has remembered how it was last set up. So if I want to get it back to the standard editing look, I still need to go back to Window, Workspace, Reset Current Workspace. Are you sure? Yes. So I now have my editing workspace as it was originally created. And I have my Windows, Workspaces, I have my Info to the front. Notice, please, that they have keyboard shortcuts. So I'm on a PC, so it's Alt-Shift-6 to get to Info at front. For a Mac, it will be Option-Shift-6. So you do have workspace keyboard shortcuts if you go between them a lot. So if I go to info to front, there is the workspace that I set up. Now say I created this workspace for a specific purpose and I don't really need it anymore. I want to get rid of it. You cannot delete a workspace while you are on a workspace. Let me demonstrate. Windows, workspace, delete workspace. And you'll see that when I get the drop down, the one workspace I can't see is my info to front because you cannot delete a workspace you're currently working on. So I'm going to click Cancel, and I'm going to Windows, Workspace, and I'm going to choose another one. So I'm going to choose Editing Workspace, Alt-Shift-3, Option-Shift-3 on Mac. And now, if I go to Windows Workspace, and I go Delete Workspace, you'll see that Info to Front is now available to delete. Select it, click OK, and it's gone. Now, one other thing that people really like to do, particularly when they're working on multiple monitors, is they like to take the program monitor and shift it to another monitor altogether. So if I take the little hashed area, these little dots next to program monitor, and start to move it around, well, it wants to dock with other things. But if I hold the control key on a PC, the command key on a Mac, and I let go of the hash area before I let go of the command or control key, you'll see that it's now become a resizable floating window that if I want, I can shift on to another monitor to have it as a standalone item. Okay, so that's how we can reset workspaces. If I want to then add it back in again, I can take the hashed area, the dots area, don't hold the control key and go to the side of my source monitor, let go, and it's docked it back in as it originally was. One last thing, we do have the option to maximize a screen. So if your mouse is over a particular panel and you do the tilde key on some keyboards, which is either above the tab key, or it's to the left of the return key on some keyboards, or on my keyboard, I'm on a UK keyboard, it's the at button or the apostrophe button, which has got shift for the at symbol, that maximizes the screen. But it hasn't completely maximized the screen because you'll see that we've still got the controls at the bottom. If you hold the control key on the PC, the command key on a Mac, whilst hitting that Maximize Frame Window button, whichever one it might be for you, you'll see that you really do get true full screen. If I hit my space bar now, I'm getting a completely full screen look. So there are options and ways, just undo that by again Control, and then your tilde key or the accent key or whichever key it works on your keyboard. So if you want a true full screen, it's Control or Command on a Mac, to get the full screen and then undoing again is control or command and hitting that key whichever one it is on your keyboard. So that's a quick look at changing your workspaces and moving panels around and bringing panels to different positions. In the next tutorial we're going to look at keyboard shortcuts and how we can find out what they are and how we can change them.